Let's be real here. The Boys season four is certainly a TV season. What? Makes no sense. The Boys season four is certainly a season of TV. That sounds better. Yeah, I don't know. It's a very interesting season to talk about. I don't know. It's a tale of two halves, really. I think the first um, three episodes were solid, but I don't think it's the best hook for the season. I think season episode four was a pretty good episode and establishing what what the season will be and then episode five is definitely that um episode that really changes things up a bit and then episode six and seven and eight really close it off in a very interesting way episode six is still kind of iffy to me for sure like there's a lot of like gross shit that just didn't need to be there you know it just felt unnecessary at that point and yeah, it's weird how people talk about that episode. It's just a, a lot going on, especially sexually, which is, I don't know, I'm the biggest fan of that, honestly. It's, it's a very weird episode and not my favorite and not something I look forward to watching. Um, episode 7 and 8 are pretty solid, though. I really like those episodes. And episode 7 was a good um, was a good pre pent ultimate episode, really setting up everything for episode 8, which episode 8 just said some more stuff. But it really um, closes off some chapters for sure, which, spoiler alert, and welcome to Bite Size Jabs, obviously, I keep forgetting. But spoiler alert, Victoria Newman's dead. Mother Newman is dead. It's so sad. It's so, so sad. I loved Victoria Newman. And she was just awesome. She was an awesome addition for sure. And she was mother. Like, oh my god, she was so fine. Ugh. Anyways, but she, she, her, she's dead. And I thought she was going to die because of home. I never know. She died a butcher. And... You know, Butcher really butchered her life. <laughs> ah, I'm like, ay, ay, ay. But, you know, it's uh, it's very interesting what they do with Butcher, which shot on Carl Urban. That dude really killed it this episode. I think he really had a stand-up performance, especially during the hospital, where you can really buy that this guy is dying. And so when he comes back and comes to kill Victoria, you sense this different sense of presence to him. He's not butcher anymore it's just this parasite that he's embodied at this point which is such an interesting thing to do with this character and it seems like it always was meant to come this way like butcher always keeps fighting but at the end of the day he comes to what he is and he becomes like the comic version of himself which for the most part season four has become like it's getting closer and closer to the comics than we think especially now where they leave off season four and they enter season five, it definitely feels like we're going to enter that, um, it's going to be like an apocalypse level kind of thing. And it's going to be very interesting to see that. And I wonder how they're going to manage all that. And I hope it's managed well, because I'm really looking forward to season five, I think. And I'm hoping that season five closes off things so well, because this show got to start off strong and it got to end off strong too. And I'm really banking on that. And for the most part, I don't think the boys season four works as a complete season of tv i think there's definitely stuff that it would um what's it called leave off on or not well man but like it's definitely not it's a setup season for sure it's like how i see um invincible season two it's a setup season for basically what's gonna the culmination of everything which i'm glad to know that this is the season five will be the final season and it's kind of sad though because we kind of did start watching this the beginning of the decade yeah, yeah, no, beginning of the decade for sure, and it's gonna be sad to leave to lose it. But you know, you're always gonna have some great moments, and I think for the most part, this show really brought a lot of great moments, and it really helped during this um, period of superhero fatigue. Where I, it's not superhero fatigue. It's, I do believe superhero fatigue comes, and it is, it does exist to a degree. But I think it's also helped by the fact that there's also a lot of unique projects coming out like this and the boys and. What else is there? Oh, wait, no, this is The Boys, huh? The Boys, Invincible, and all that, you know? It's going to be very, very fun, and it's going to be very fun to see. But let's just, let's, I mean, there's so much on my mind, especially that um, that finale for sure. There's a lot of wrap around. La, 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 I can't talk. But there's a lot to wrap my head around. Like how Butcher wrapped that thing around Victoria Newman. It was just, damn, there's a lot to wrap my head around. And some things I am a big fan of. I'm glad that it's going to be, it's going to feel like an apocalypse for sure. And it's going to feel like we're going to get like so much crazy shit. 
And I, it does feel like they did kind of hold back, you know, for doing any crazy shit and any ca- big major character deaths because of what they're going to do, you know, in season five, which season five will be a lot. And yeah, we always keep our eye on season five, but currently season four is a very interesting season. And I do think the finale really justifies that. And people do say that this is the weakest season of the boys. I, I don't know if I would agree. We'll see. I think I like the season a lot, but I am, I understand why people aren't raving about it that much. It's certainly a good season of TV for sure. And it's like, I don't know if it's missing anything, but I think it's just trying to do so much, so much um, juggling. It's a lot of juggling, I think, that they really had to do. So there's so many um, things that they had in their head and, I think they're definitely trying to juggle all of those stuff. They're definitely trying to juggle all of those storylines into this season and into season five, which I think they do uh, an interesting job on. I don't think it's the best job they could have done, but it's definitely something. And you know, it's a it's gonna be a very very interesting. And you know, I think first off, the MVP of this episode is Jack Quaid. I think he's definitely. He's very honing it in here. Huey's really had a great season four. Like even though he's been gone, he's gone through the ringer this season. Like he is going through it, and it's pretty sad. But it, the fact that he's coming out on top is, I mean, still he has to, he's still going to jail at the end of that episode. But still, he he is coming out on top, and I am happy for him. You know, I I think it's good that he's coming, that he's at least having some level of um victory in a way i mean he's still kind of going to jail but still i mean the guy is still moving keeping his head up which is one of the great things about this show and kiwi's actually one of the better characters for sure and it's really sad to see this guy go through it all but he is taking it and he's taking it like he can and it's great and i think jack quaid really honed that in really well and he definitely carried he yeah no he definitely did um do a good amount this episode and he really he actually did lead the boys in a way and especially led him into a path of forgiveness and a lot of redemption and all that. And yeah, she, he's definitely an MVP. There's also, um, Starlight, actually Erin Moriarty. She, she actually had a great performance cause she had to balance all these, these two characters and how they represent her as one character. And it's very interesting to see, Starlight versus Starlight fully embodied. Like, I didn't catch that at first, but yeah, this entire season has been her trying to grapple with the fact that is she Starlight or is she, is Starlight her or is Starlight the shell of herself and what she believes herself to be, which is an interesting concept for sure, an interesting thing to explore for this character. And I feel like for the most part, I think she's honed it in and she's found who she is truly. She is truly a mess of a person, but. She's trying to pick up the pieces, and it's going to be very interesting where they take her in Season 5, and that's going to be very fun for sure. And there's also a lot of other characters. MVP of the season is also um, A-Train. A-Train had a great season. He didn't appear in this episode, sadly, but he had. He definitely was an MVP, and it makes sense that he wouldn't be here because, fuck, I'm, I'm scared to be in America at this time. That'd be a scary shit. But yeah, no, it's, it's definitely, um, definitely going to be a very... Um, scary season five, and also for the most part, Kamiko and them, Kamiko's Kamiko and Frenchie's storyline, they feel like it was just kind of a, it was there for their character's sake, but it didn't feel like it was the most engaging plot line, nor it was a very um, it didn't feel like it was very necessary at points, but it was there for their characters, and for the most part, it had some purpose, and it did bring these characters together in a way that it feels kind of satisfying to see them together. And it's pretty cute. I still don't think... I think they were definitely sidelined and were just there sometimes, but for the most part, they they had had their moments. And I'm glad that they closed things off with them on somewhat better terms. Obviously, they got kidnapped, so it's not the best terms, but it's close enough. What could you expect? And, yeah, and then the boy... Not the boys. Mother's Milk, poor guy. This poor guy keeps getting violated with dongs and other shit. So I feel bad for this dude. This dude's going through hell. 
And also, don't forget about Homelander. Homelander is always so fantastic. Anthony Starr is just an absolute killer. Seriously, this dude is so fun. I'm gonna miss this. Act. I'm gonna miss his performance as Homelander once the show's over. It's just gonna be so sad to see this guy go. And there's also oh, what do you call Victoria Newman? I did mention that she was fantastic, and it's sad to see her go too. And um, Butcher is also fantastic. Ryan was a very interesting one for sure. He is the wild card of the season, if I haven't said that enough. But Ryan is the wild card, and I think what they were doing to him, what really pushed him over the edge, did make sense, and it kind of was pretty sad. Like, for Mallory to really insist, insist on it, and insist the urgency onto Ryan is a lot for a kid to understand that, yeah, your dad's a monster, and you might have to kill him. And you will have to kill him if you want to save this country. And it's going to be very interesting to see that. If they actually make that happen, you know, I do want to see Homelander go ape shit though, like absolute apocalypse level shit. Just no holds back. Just embrace the fucking madness, you know, like destroy the world at that point. You know, I, I want to see something like just embrace the evil servant and just just like destroy cities and shit. I need to see that once for Homelander. Like he needs to have a superhero, super villain moment, and it'd be interesting to see a whole um Ryan either have a super villain. That a super villain moment too, or his superhero moment, which I'm betting he has his superhero moment because this poor kid has gone through hell, and he's definitely like the hope for both sides of this um, war, essentially. Which Ryan is um, definitely played well this season, his best season for sure, and I think he's definitely one of the better characters this season. And it's fun to see this kid progress into something more and. It's going to be fun to see him progress even more in season five. You know, I think the guy, the kid's really good and the character's gone way better, you know? So it's going to be a lot for sure what happens for him. And I'm betting that he does save. He does do something against Homelander at least once. It is essentially the, the clone, the clone um, plotline that they have. It's do they, do they actually use him against his father? I do think that will happen. I hope that happens and you hope you see that. It'd be kind of gross to see them. It's going to be pretty sad to see it, but I want to see it. You know what I'm saying? It's just, I just need it. And I, yeah, there's a lot of things that I want for season five, but I need to keep my mind off that at the moment. Also, Ashley became became super powered. We'll see where that goes. She really, I hope, I hope that super power brings back her hair. That's kind of sad, you know, pretty sad. And then there's also, uh, what's it called? The Black Noir and The Deep. The Deep really just got its conclusion, episode seven. And it really closed it off where he is heading towards in season five, which is gonna be very fun. I do bet he dies too, or something. Some something happens for sure with these um with the with season five. It's gonna de definitely feel like an apocalypse. So yeah, you know, it's a it's definitely a lot this season, and it's a lot of plot lines that they're really juggling so they can prepare it for season five. Yeah, so, yeah, season five is the main goal that we want to see closed off super well. I want them to, I want this show to end off on an absolute high, you know. You want to end off, like, Daredevil season three, not, like, some other shitty show, you know. Um, I'm trying to think of bad season. See, you don't want to think of a bad season of TV or the good, but it's basically forgettable. I never watched Game of Thrones, so I don't know. But, yeah, end off, like, end off, like, Daredevil season three. That's all I ask. Is I mean, man, Daredevil season three is so fantastic. But that's for another video. So, yes, thank you for listening. I guess you know it's it's been fun talking about the boys and keeping up with y'all. You know, it's it's definitely a show. Oh wait, fuck! How did I forget about Sister Sage? Oh, Sister Sage is so awesome. I love Sister Sage, especially in this episode where she didn't really appear often, but when she appeared. She really unveiled all her cards and really, not all of them, but she re revealed most of them and it really set up a lot for season five, which, man, she is brilliant. I love Sister Sage. It makes sense that she would keep all her cards to herself because Homelander is going to fuck it up anyway. Or as smart Homelander is, he isn't the smartest and that's the thing. So, I don't know. It's going to be very fun to see her in season five. I'm glad that she's coming back. I thought she was going to die, honestly, but I'm glad she's here and I'm hoping. I'm really hoping they do something with that next season, and we'll see how it closes off for sure. So yeah, 
overall season four of the boys definitely gets a 7.5 or an 8 out of 10 for sure it's definitely a it's a strong season of tv but is it isn't the strongest season of the boys sadly but we have season five to hope that it's the best season of the boys so yes thank you for listening to off the dome and listening to me yap my ass off so yeah, I hope y'all tune in for more. I think there's going to be a lot more superhero news coming up soon with Daredevil and um, um, Deadpool and all that. I could have those type of videos out too, but we'll see. Thank you for listening, guys, and hope y'all had a fun time.